What is up everybody? This is going to be a team review for my draft of The Woods Season 14. I don't think I've actually ever done one of these before. Um, basically what we're going to be doing is analyzing my team um, basically pick by pick, why I chose what I chose, and just give you some, um, I don't know, give you some intel on maybe what I'm planning to do this season with these bonds and how I see them all fitting together. And hopefully uh, this is the team that can take me back to a championship. We're on season 14 and I haven't won since season six. So yeah, gotta, gotta fix that. Uh, Woodsy's been on a tear. He's won like two in a row, I, three in a row if you count Little Cub, uh, which I do. Unfortunately, someone's gotta stop him. I, I will do it. I will do it. Uh, so let me show you the team. Um, actually, before I get into the team, let me pull up uh, kind of like the rules, I guess, and uh, a little bit about how we're doing this season because it, it is pretty unique. Uh, maybe if this wants to cooperate. There we go. Um, yeah, so this is a national dex draft. So that means essentially anything that's not Nat Dex Ubers is going to be allowed. There are some exceptions. Uh, Palafin is allowed. Um, that, that, that might be the only exception. Uh, I actually I don't really know Nat Dex what's considered Ubers, but there are some very strong ones that you can find in this format. Uh, some of the higher tiered ones you can see here. So. Yeah, super fun stuff. We're doing an interesting thing with the Terra captain rules. So essentially each team is going to get two captains and it, there's like a Terra tax and you can only use five points. Long story short, uh, if you pick like one of these high tiers, these are gonna be worth four points. So if one of these was your Terra captain, you're looking at something that is seven or less as your other Terra captain. So it kind of does balance out. It's not a perfect system. I don't think any of the mods in Woods would tell you that. But it is interesting. Uh, and then on top of that, so with your two Terra Captains, you do also get um, typing restrictions. So, for example, the way we did it is that... Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of spoil my first pick here. It was Golden Go. So for Golden Go, if you choose it as one of your captains, then you pick one of its stabs as one of your two types, and then your other one, it could be any type. But you can only Terra into those two types. So uh, it's an interesting way to do it. I don't think other draft leagues have tried it quite like this. We'll see how it goes. Um, before anyone has played any games yet, the server seems to think it's a pretty good idea overall. Uh, at the very least, people are excited to give it a try, so we'll see how it goes. Um, and then other than that, uh, I mean, that's kind of like the big thing was how we were going to handle Terra and things like that. Um, if you've been following Woods, if you're part of the server or you at least know anything about Woods at all, you would know in the past you've been able to draft as little as 9 and up to 11. Uh, starting this season, we're requiring every coach to draft exactly 11. So what that means um, is basically you can't be as loosey-goosey with your points. You you still can because you can draft like a couple one-point mons or something at the end and basically still have the same team. But I'm trying to give some love to the lower tier mons and... Um, you know, things like that. So, um, other rules, I mean, pretty basic stuff. You can draft a Mega, but you don't have to. You can only have one Mega evolution. Um, we do ban Z Crystals, and we also ban Z Boo, or, yeah, I just said that. Z Crystals and Dynamax, those are the two big ones. Um, other than that, there's, a, there's only a few other things that are banned. You can see some of them here in the ban section. 
uh, certain abilities or certain moves on Pokemon. There's a couple complex bands. A um, couple big ones. Terra Blast, Regieleki. I definitely didn't want to let that fly. Uh, really hard to tier it accurately. Uh, you know, you give Regieleki coverage to deal with ground types and suddenly it's fucking busted because it's got base 200 speed. Uh, and you could do like Stab Bolt Beam, for example. Um, Shed Ninja was another one for Terra that we... Uh, so Reggie Lucky can still Terra, it just can't Terra Blast. Shed Ninja, just not even gonna bother with that. Um, no Seismic Toss on Mega Kangaskhan, no Shell Smash from Mega Blastoise, you can see some of those there. Um, other than that, pretty standard Draft League stuff, if you know what a Draft League is, then everything else um, is pretty straightforward. So, let me go ahead and toggle back over here. Uh, we're gonna move this out of the way. Uh, there we go. Struggling with some hotkeys here. Jesus. There. Okay. So, I already spoiled it, but my first pick in this draft was Golden Go. Now, Golden Go is a Pokemon <laughs> that exists. Uh, I believe it's like third highest in Scarlet Violet OU. Uh, it's at least up there. I had the sixth pick, sixth pick overall. So five people picked in front of me. Funny story, I really wanted Great Tusk and I told exactly one person that I wanted Great Tusk and what does he do? He drafts it, so it's fine, I'm not mad. Uh, but Golden Go. Super, super good Pokemon. Uh, if you look at its base stats, you might not think it's super amazing, right? When you're, like, you're looking at its base stat total, it's good. It's like, it's definitely not bad or anything, but it doesn't blow you away. So why is this one of the better Pokemon in the format? Well, it's gotta be this ability, right? Good as gold. Uh, good as gold just is a flat out immunity to status moves. So this includes Will-O-Wisp. Uh, I mean, you're already immune to Toxic because of Steel-type, but uh, Thunder Wave, Taunt, any of those moves just fail. Um, the biggest one is Defog. Uh, because you're a Ghost-type, you, you inherently block Rapid Spin, and you can also block Defog with Good as Gold. It's basically the only way in the entire game to do that. And the fact that it's also a ghost type makes it like the premier kind of like entry hazard Pokemon. Because if your plan is to lay a bunch of hazards, which spoiler, uh, that is part of my plan, then yeah, it just it functions in its role so well. And you just block defog, you block rapid spin. But even moving past that. It's a Pokemon that you can't whittle down with Toxic. Uh, you can't even whittle it down with something lesser like a Burn. You can't paralyze it, you can't sleep it. I guess you, like, there are maybe some niche ways around it, like Sneasler, Dire Claw. Actually, if that's Poison, then you can't even do that. Let me check. Is Dire Claw? Yeah, you can't even Dire Claw this thing. Yet. So, this thing is incredible. Uh, there's a ton of different items you can run on it as well. It's very versatile in that regard. Uh, you can choice it. You can life orb it. You can run bulky with leftovers. Um, there's lots of different things you can do with resistance berries. Um, yeah, lots of options, I, I feel, for this Pokemon. Um, now, it's usually... What it wants to do is just kind of hit you. It's, it's got a lot of good coverage options outside of Shadow Ball. Um, so yeah, Shadow Ball, it's got Focus Blast for Dark Types, Dazzling Gleam for Dark Types, Flash Cannon, it can Nasty Plot. I mean, this thing is is pretty, pretty solid. Um, you can T-Wave things, you can trick things, but I think, you know, the biggest value it's a pretty good wall breaker. Um, 84 speed isn't blowing anything away. Uh, but that special attack is pretty good. So, 
really happy to get this Pokemon as a backup to Great Tusk. It's unfortunate that that Pokemon got taken, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so we have 18 coaches in this draft. And with that, uh, me being the sixth pick, that means I had 24 picks in between this pick and the next. Um, the picks between two and three were a lot shorter of a wait. So um, with that pick, uh, no prizes for guessing. We went with Glamora. Uh, Glamora, another Pokemon introduced in Gen 9, is basically the ideal teammate with Golden Go. We saw this core last season. Uh, Shaderu drafted it, and he did super well. He got to semis and only lost to Uzair, uh, who's a very strong battle in his own right. Um, yeah, I. And, and this is why, um, one reason why it's just an amazing partner with Golden Go is it gets Toxic to breathe as an ability. Uh, only Pokemon that gets it. And basically when you're hit with a physical attack, it passively will lay a layer of Toxic Spikes. So that's super, super good. Um, you can punish U-turns with that, especially with the typing that Glamora has. Um, fake outs, weak attacks that you might be expecting. Um, even if you're just going to sack this thing to a strong physical attack, like, you still get up a layer of toxic spikes. It's incredible. Um, now, it, 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 outside of that, though, so it does also get stealth rock and spikes, and you could even just run toxic spikes. I don't really know why you would, unless you're really adamant about making sure those are on the field. Um, so this thing, it basically gets every hazard that's not uh, sticky webs, which is very nice. Uh, but it's very similar to Golden Go and its stat distribution, if you look at it. Uh, super, super similar. Uh, I mean, we're talking like within five to 10 on pretty much every stat. Um, so it, it kind of does the same thing. They, they work in tandem. Um, I think you'll see this core a lot in Draft League, um, especially in more limited formats, but even in nat decks like this one is. Um, yeah, it, it's just a strong combo. And uh, it could do some other good things. So it's got uh, a unique move, Mortal Spin, which is basically a poison type rapid spin. Um, so this thing, super good at hazard control because of that. Of course, it's gotta watch out for steel types that could block that, but uh, yeah, this thing also incredible coverage. Obviously it's got stab coverage, but earth power, energy ball, uh, dazzling gleam, I saw up there too. Um, lots and lots of options. You can even run Venoshock if you're confident that toxic spikes will be up. So. Uh, very cool mod, very cool. Uh, next pick, I went ahead and grabbed this thing, Clefable. Uh, this is season 14 of Woods. I have participated in other draft leagues, and I've been in Woods since like season two. And I, to this day, have never used Clefable. Somehow, subway. Uh, I thought this would be the time. This would be the time, so. Um, two great abilities that you're going to be using, Magic Guard and Unaware, depending on your matchup. Um, if you're really scared of scare, like setup threats, Unaware is a great option because um, you just can blanket check. You know, assuming Clefable can take a hit from whatever it is neutrally, then Unaware is great uh, if there's something you're super afraid of. Uh, other than that, Magic Guard is super nice. Um, if you look at it, you know, assuming I'm running Magic Guard that week and I, I bring these three, um, this is a very solid core. They're not exceptionally bulky. Um, although Golden Go, I didn't touch on it, but it has like 11 resist or something insane. Um, it does have some common weaknesses, but, uh, but yeah. So these three, while not the, the bulkiest Pokemon around, uh, you can't whittle it down with any of them with Toxic. Uh, one of them is Toxic, one, or Poison. One Steel, one has Magic Guard. Uh, 
they're all special attackers, and um, you know, having a strong fairy type uh, is just really good in draft in general. So uh, people talk well, maybe not as much anymore, but getting your dragon fairy steel core can be a very strong um, strategy just because of how well those types synergize together. Uh, so adding that onto a team that already has Golden Go felt like fun. Um, but Clefable checks a lot of boxes, right? So um, it could be more of a cleric and kind of like a wish support Pokemon because uh, you do get wish, which is pretty good. Um, super good when you factor in that it also gets teleport. Teleport is, in my opinion, the strongest pivot move, simply because you're guaranteed, it has negative priorities, so you're guaranteed to go last in pretty much, like, any scenario. Uh, there's probably situations where that's not the case, but, like, 99% of the time, teleport goes second. So, for faster, frailer Pokemon, or something that just doesn't get in easily, it's so good to be able to position and, and get those Pokemon in when and where you want them to. Uh, but also just has really great synergy with Wish on top of that. Um, Clefable can go offensive too, though. Um, especially with, like, you know, you run Life, Go Life Orb Magic Guard as an example. Suddenly you're hitting super hard. Um, you get a lot of coverage. Again, uh, more more theming to the team. The Fable gets insane coverage overall. You can hit a lot of things super effectively, uh, which is really nice. Um, some other utility things it does, it's another Stealth Rocker. It takes a little bit of pressure off Glamora if Glamora doesn't want to run Stealth Rock maybe. Uh, you get knockoff for some reason, so knockoff is always good just to remove items. Uh, you can be a screen setter if that's something you want to do. Excuse me. You get healing wish as an option instead of wish maybe. Heal bell and aromatherapy. <laughs> I don't know why both, but you have... That's just the thing. Clefable has so many options. Um, it's a Pokemon that when you look at it, the base stats don't blow you away. You're like, why is this Pokemon so good? Why does everyone talk about this Pokemon as being annoying? Why do I struggle to beat it all the time? Because the stats are not that impressive, but everything else about it, the pure fairy typing, the two really great abilities, and just its moveset, um, it's so flexible, it's, it's so good, and lots of things that you can do with it. All right, so for my next pick, I didn't actually draft this Pokemon. So um, basically I drafted my team. It's funny that I'm making a video now of all times. Usually I draft my team and I don't make transactions. Um, so in Woods, you are basically allotted five free agent transactions per season. And I either use them very little or not at all. This time I basically went through and used it all already. Um, there are some things I wanted to change about the team. So I didn't technically draft this Pokemon, but the next Pokemon um, that we're going to talk about is Kartana. Now, I already had a Steel type in Golden Go, but two things. Number one, Golden Go and Kartana are not doing the same thing. And number two, it's a Steel type. <laughs> I... I think Steel type is one of the strongest, so it's completely fine to double up on that. And this, the other thing too is that um, you'll kind of see as we get into the rest of the team, but I felt pretty weak against bulky waters. And so, uh, I mean, look at this attack stat. I, I think bulky waters are going to run, run to the hills when they see Kartana. So. Yeah, I, I needed some firepower, basically. Um, uh, I needed the speed tier. I needed just raw power. I, this thing is very, very strong. And with beast boost, I mean, you can snowball 
pretty quickly and things can get out of hand for your opponent. Um, you know, with the hazard stacking strategy that I'm going with, having something like Kartana that can snowball a game felt pretty strong um, synergistically. Um, and one cool thing that you can do with Beast Boost, um, it doesn't really look like it based on these stats, but I believe there's a way that you can actually get your speed to be more than your attack. Um, let's see. We'll, uh, we'll try this. Yeah, you can actually do something like this. Um, and you say, why do you want to lower your attack? Well, you don't. That's not ideal. But being able to get a speed boost anytime you kill something can also be very valuable, especially if you're chipping things down with hazards. Um, so making sure you have outspeed scarfers or something if it gets like a plus one or plus two speed off, things like that. It's just an option. It's just an option that I think is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it does have defog as a utility option. Uh, ideally that's not something I'm clicking because I would like to be stacking hazards but it is an option uh, it's another knockoff user which is really good to have but yeah this thing is more of a cleaner slash wall breaker I just want to be ideally hitting things and hitting them hard uh, so yeah that's the idea behind Cartana next pick this is another one that I didn't actually pick. It went undrafted for some godforsaken reason. Uh, Woods is on drugs sometimes, I swear. Uh, but Garchomp. Garchomp fits the team, like, exceptionally well. It, it, I didn't want to use Garchomp. I kind of didn't want to use it, but it just fit too good, too well. Sorry, Alex, don't butcher me for poor English at times. All right, buddy, I fixed it, okay? Um, no, this thing's insane. Um, it actually ended up being the highest point value Pokemon on my team because it's 18 points uh, individually and Golden Go was 17. Um, this thing, again, super, super versatile, amazing stat spread. Um, Pretty close in speed tier to Gartana, but that's okay. Uh, 102. Uh, very strong. Gives me another good attacker. But what I like about Garchomp is that there's there's no end to how many sets I can run with this thing. I, I, I can already see, you know, Choice Scarf, Choice Band, Swords Dance, Scale Shot, uh, Defensive with, like, Rocky Helmet and Rough Skin. So, you know, I, I get all these hazards up, and then if you hit me uh, using a physical attack, you just take <laughs> so much damage between Rocky Helmet and Rough Skin, in addition to the chip from hazards. Um, yeah, that, that sounds pretty cool, too. Um, it, Garchomp, it, it gets coverage for, its, for things that you would think counter, right? It gets Poison Jab. It gets fire coverage granted the fire coverage you know on the physical side isn't great but a lot of steel types that are switching into garchomp don't have great special defense and uh even then they might get two or three shot uh pretty easily by like a fire blast um you know i'm thinking things like corviknight obviously things that avoid the earthquake um yeah and then another thing is it gives me more hazards! Yay! <laughs> uh, it gives me an alternative spikes user to Glamora, so Glamora doesn't have to run spikes every week if I, you know, want to run spikes. And it also gives me Stealth Rock. Um, you know, it, I just think in draft it's so important to be able to give your team the flexibility where it's not like, okay, you know, if I need Stealth Rock this week, or if I want to run Stealth Rock, I gotta bring Garchomp. Like, the more you can have that shared versatility amongst the team, I think the better off you are. Um, so that's really good. I like that. Um, and then with all that hazard stacking, you've got Dragon Tail as an option too. Um, you know, because Garchomp 
we all know is going to force switches. Um, so you can just rack up more damage that way. Uh, very cool pick. I, I'm excited to... I know I kind of was talking at first like it's a negative, but it's going to be so good <laughs> on this team, I think. Alright, next was Polyrath. And... If you know me, Polyrath is my favorite Pokemon. It's my... Um, I mean, it's my logo in the Draft League, the Panama City Polyrath. Um, I've actually got a plush. I don't know if you can see it. It's like up there somewhere behind me. Um, got a plush of it. Fucking love Polyrath. Um, but this Pokemon has a very good role on my team. Um, it, it, it gets water absorbed, so it's a Scald switch in. Um, and it, honestly, just having a water absorber f for Scald switch ins alone is like valuable. Um, and especially, I was talking about how I was scared of bulky waters. Um, even just like resisting water types is, is super important. So I, I, I do love that it has water absorbed. Um, now, as far as movesets, this is another Pokemon that I feel is very flexible. It's kind of like, okay, so if you're a... If you're a Smash Bros. player, you'll understand this. Uh, it, it's basically like... I can I think of it as like a Mario of Pokemon. In that it's a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type. It's like... It can do a little bit of everything, but not, like, exceptionally well, but it's not bad at anything either. Um, so, yeah, you know, moveset-wise, there's a few different things you could do. You could go for bulk up. You could go for a surprise belly drum. I don't know why that's not showing. Um, I, and it gets really good coverage on top of that. So... Um, you got some new tools in Gen 8. I know we're on Gen 9 now, but Darkest Lariat is a big one um, to hit opposing psychics. You get Liquidation now, which it used to not have before it was relying on... Uh, it's not that much worse. Waterfall. Um, you still get Toxic, so I can spread Toxic on things if I wish. Uh, you can you can even use Scald yourself. Um... Power Up Punch is a decent option. Ice Punch. Haze, if I want to stop someone from setting up. Uh, EQ, Drain Punch. Yeah. Oh, and CC. How can I forget CC? Um, some cool options in here. Uh, one that I'm particularly fond of for this team composition is going to be Circle Throw, though. Um, again, just forcing phase. Um, getting more Entry Hazard Chip. Kind of the idea. <laughs> uh, should be fun. So, uh, And while we're on the topic, uh, Golden Go. So for my two Terra Captains, we're going to have Golden Go. Uh, and it's going to have Ghost and Fighting for the two types. Polyrath is actually going to be my other Terra Captain. And it will be Fighting and Ground. Um, so as a ground type with water absorb, felt pretty good. Um, pure ground type is, is a pretty good type defensively. Um, only weak to ice and grass if you remove water. So um, all around pretty solid. Um, okay. Uh, is there a way to change this to a box? I guess not. Okay. So... Next is Mandibuzz, and Mandibuzz is a Pokemon that I also did not draft, but its defensive synergy with the rest of my team was really potent, uh, particularly Golden Go and Mandibuzz uh, cover each other's weaknesses really, really well. Um, I, I wanted a, a pretty solid defensive dark type uh, the the original pokemon i drafted was wochian um, so and, and the reason for that is i i i want to be able to resist ghost in, in a strong way um, this is also going to help me with some other types that i was struggling with but this is just a good utility mon um, 
it gets defog, it gets U-turn. My team, one big weakness of my team overall is the, uh, it's like a lack of momentum users. So, so far it's just Clefable and Mandibuzz that can pivot and gain momentum. Now I think they're both great at it, um, particularly Clefable, but Mandibuzz is pretty good at it as well. Um, it's, an, it's another knockoff user. Um, it gets Whirlwind, so more phasing. Uh, it gets Toxic, it can Taunt, it can Roost. Uh, I imagine this thing being a little bit more defensive, but you can... I mean, I know those attacking stats aren't great, but there's some surprise things you can do. Because uh, you do get Nasty Plot, and so if you run an offensive Mandibuzz after a Nasty Plot, uh, you have some pretty good coverage options. Um, Dark Pulse, Heat Wave, Air Slash, um, Shadow Ball, even. And, yeah, uh, th there's some cool things you can do. But primarily, this thing, I would imagine, is more of a defensive bond, kind of a glue piece. Um, maybe I can get cheeky with it, run, like, Rain Dance, uh, U-turn into Polyrath some sometime or something, but... Yeah. Yep, that's Mandibuzz. Not too exciting. Uh, but the next pick, super, super exciting. Uh, incredibly, like, overwhelmingly exciting. Um, Spide Ops is my eighth pick, so I, I had three more picks after this, and I actually, I did draft this one. This is not a transaction. I drafted it, and it's worth two points. So you say, okay, it's worth two points. Look at this stat spread. It is garbage. What a terrible Pokemon. Wrong. You are dead wrong. Dead, dead wrong. The abilities, not great. Pure bug typing, meh. You know, it, it's actually like has some merit defensively as a pure bug, but meh. You know, these stats, meh. Why did you draft it? This move? This move? This move, that move. Those are moves. Those are moves, and that is worth picking a Pokemon for, in my opinion. It gives me a third Spiker with Garchomp and Glamora. It gives me a Sticky Web user that I didn't have. And that sort of helps patch up my speed weakness, since I can pretty reliably keep it on the field once it's up. Um, toxic spikes, if I wanted to run that for whatever reason. Um, that's its primary purpose. If you see me bring it to a game, that's like that's what it's doing. But that's not all it's doing. Because it can first impression, it can memento, and you know, maybe that's a way that I gain momentum. And uh, yeah, it's actually a great way to gain momentum. I would argue. Uh, you can taunt. You can U-turn out. Uh, you can sucker punch for more priority. It, it can do some things, all right? I'm not, I'm not going to say it's the best mod in the world, but if it can click this move and sometimes this move, I think I'll be okay with it. Uh, so yeah, that's spied ups. I, I don't have to tell you why it made sense with the team. I think you get it. All right. Next, Mega Banet, Mega Banet, Baynet, however you say it. I say Banet. Um, this thing is slept on, and someone made the joke that it has insomnia, so how can it be slept on? Fuck you, whoever that was. That's not funny. I I, I can say stuff like that. You can't. <laughs> uh, just kidding, just kidding. But I already have a Ghost type in Golden Go. Um, so why would I draft this? W what purpose does it serve? Well, I'm really dedicated, if you can't tell, I'm super dedicated to hazard stacking. And Golden Go is going to faint. It's not going to live every match. You know, things are going to knock it out. Um, on top of that, I may want to Terra Fighting with it. And go that route. It it's a very good Terra Fighting user. And so, if the opponent that I'm facing is going to have Rapid Spin, 
and let's say they don't have defog, or even if they have defog, um, <laughs> if they have defog and this is in, I can taunt it with Prankster. But anyway, um, it's just another way to block Rapid Spin. Um, I felt like I was lacking offensive presence too a little bit. So like, yeah, this thing 165 attack. I know the rest of its stats were kind of lackluster, but um, between Prankster and then ha having access to Shadow Sneak, I think that more than makes up for it. Uh, again, another knockoff user. So important. I I put a lot of value into knockoff. It's just such a good move, especially in draft, uh, where you can knock off resistance berries or surprise scarves. But, uh, really, the, the list is endless on how many, like, how useful it is to have knockoff around. Um, now, this is a Pokemon that I didn't originally draft, and I didn't have, I didn't have a Mega originally. Um, but very, very excited to use this. I've used it in IBL before. It took, to, honestly, really great success. It was one of my best Pokemon on that team, and that team was loaded. Um, yeah, this thing, very excited to use it. It gets all kinds of status moves. Um, uh, T-Wave, Will-O-Wisp, Toxic, Taunt. I, I mean, you can do a lot of things. The 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 craziest thing about Mega Bayonet, though, if you don't know, is this move. Um, access to Prankster with Destiny Bond. Uh, you can basically do a loop where you have an attack. Uh, right, so you... You prankster Destiny Bond, and then if they, you know, if there's like a scary threat or something that you're willing to trade one for one with Bayonet, which a lot of times that's what it's good for, then you can either force things to switch out because they're like, well, fuck, I, I don't want to lose, you know, this Pokemon that's super important in, my, in the matchup. Um... You can just kind of cycle it. So you Destiny Bond, they, if they don't kill you and you're slower, you do something like Shadow Claw, you attack after they attack. Because you're not that fast, you're 75. So assuming what is in front of you is faster, you can kind of do this loop where you Destiny Bond and and it's it kind of like stays for two turns. It's, it's nutty. It, it is honestly really hard to deal with, even if you're prepared for it. Um, I, I think this thing is really valuable to have on the team. Uh, it's another just kind of strong mon, utility. Um, my team does lack speed. I know I have some webs, but Kartana is the fastest one I have at 109. Nowadays, that's not very fast. Um, so having, you know, the priority, having Prankster, uh, really, really valuable in my opinion. All right, uh, next, honestly, these last two picks, both one point. So not going to be like huge essential members to the team, but I could definitely see myself bringing them. So um, first up is Darumaka, praise be. This thing is honestly not bad. You might sleep and, and I wouldn't blame you at first. But 90 base attack and hustle means this thing is actually hitting pretty hard, especially if you give it like a choice band or something. I know the speed is nothing to write home about, but you do have web support. Uh, I've I've lost games and drafts, games multiple two times to this Pokemon. And not in Little Cup or something. Like, actual national decks drafts. Um, <laughs> this thing is actually not... Do not fuck with Darumaka. Um, is it a meme? Kind of. Yes, it is. But is it a good meme? Yes. Yes, it is. Alright, and then the final pick is Cedra. Now, Cedra. Cedra is one point, but it for one point, I do think it actually is very solid and can be pretty good. So I think this is one that you're probably going to run Eviolite on, like 
every week. Uh, Poison Point, <laughs> I, it's not it's not toxic debris good, but it is very good. 30% chance to poison physical attacks. Um, for you know a team that's trying to wilder you down through like toxic debris, uh, toxic in general, entry hazards, stuff like that. Good ability. Um, and really this thing is just kind of a bulky water. I know the stats don't look too amazing, but with an EV light, it actually does tank pretty well, especially on the physical side. Um, I don't know. You can kind of, um, what is it, Scald, I would say. Uh, scald, Flip Turn, you know, this is another way that I can get momentum. Um, I could try to sweep <laughs> if I'm fucking lunatic, which I am, with like Dragon Dance or something. Um, clear smog to get rid of uh, setup potentially. Uh, I, yeah, I'll be honest. This thing, if I bring it, it's because I want a bulky water that can gain momentum and spread status. Maybe that's that's pretty much why I would bring it. So uh, yeah, here we go. So yeah, that's the team. Uh, I did not plan to spend 40 minutes breaking down my own team. That's kind of silly. Uh, did not expect that. Um, I will be doing a power rankings for all the teams in Woods. Uh, except for my team. I never actually PR my own team. I just rank the last. Um, but that'll be done. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be done exactly. Here in the next few days, hopefully. Um, Zip and I will probably do it um, whenever we can get some free time uh, it might be like Sunday or something we'll see but look forward to that it should be fun definitely will be longer than 40 minutes if I just spent 40 minutes on my own team um, those have been trending longer and longer I think the last one was like three and a half hours um, we'll see how it goes but thank you for watching if you made it this far you are a legend <laughs> Uh, yeah, listening to me ramble for like 40 minutes about Pokemon, pretty insane. But yeah, um, hope you have a great rest of your day, whatever time it is. Great night. And uh, yeah, um, catch y'all later. <laughs>